Hello again, this is the last video for the Limiting Reactant Lab. This is the procedure and data collection. So this is the laboratory part um, that if we were in the classroom, you would be doing one of these experiment reactions and other people would be doing the other ones and then we would put the data together and collect it. Let me just go through the procedure with you. I have your balanced chemical equation um, up on the board. We're using sodium bicarbonate, 0.15 grams. So here are the three samples. We are using acetic acid, and I've drawn up into syringes 5.0 milliliters of the 0 0.20 molar, 0 0.40 molar, and 0 0.60 molar. I'm going to put those together. Uh, so if you follow along with the procedure, I'll start with reaction A and attach the syringe and stopper to reaction A. And we can see that right now I've drawn up five milliliters of the acetic acid. What I'm going to do is make sure that the stopper is sealed and then slowly add the acetic acid into the test tube. You can see that that is bubbling. We can see that we've got the stopper kind of pushing back against the expansion of that gas. Uh, I'm going to shake that a little bit and make sure that the reaction goes to completion. So hopefully you can see that we've got some bubbling here. If I um, put my hand onto the stop or the onto the test tube. I can feel that it feels cold, which means that it's drawing heat from the surroundings, including the glass and my hand, in order for this reaction to run. Okay, so I was carefully keeping the stopper sealed. And we're going to set that aside. And um, most of the reaction is complete. We'll go back and get the data here in a moment. We'll do the same thing. with reaction B. This is the um, 0 0.40 molar acetic acid. Same thing. I'm putting some of the acetic acid in slowly until all of it has been put into the reaction vessel. We can see some bubbling for sure. Again, feels cold. Um, you can see that we are getting quite a bit of gas produced. I'm keeping the seal there so you can see your reaction taking place. That one. Almost finished bubbling. Okay, we can see quite a bit of gas produced there. And then we'll do the third one, reaction C, with the 0.6 molar reactant acetic acid. Okay, again, see quite a response here. Get all the acetic acid into the reaction vessel. Allow that plunger then to react. All right, so here are our three reaction vessels. Let's take a quick look at the data that we have. Of course, something has to fall over during that time. All right, so let's start with reaction A to get our data. So we put in five mils, so we're going to subtract five mils from our values and take a look at where the stopper is. Looks like we have 29 .0 milliliters. I'll write that down. Yeah, 
Section A. Nine point zero milliliters, and we're going to subtract the five point zero milliliters of the acetic acid that we put into the system. So that gives us an actual yield of twenty four point zero milliliters of CO two. So that's the actual yield of CO two for that particular reaction. For the next one, this is reaction B with the point four zero molar. Uh, acetic acid, we can see that that reads in the 59 point, it's reacting, looks like 59.9 milliliters. And we'll subtract our 5.0 milliliters, uh, which was the amount of acetic acid that was uh, put into the reaction system. So that gives us 54.9 milliliters of carbon dioxide. And then for reaction C, uh, I'm going to have to do an estimate above 60 mils. Uh, and that looks like about 63.0 mils. So I'll put that down here. And subtract out our 5.0 mils. Darcy, what's the matter? Okay. So we get 58.0 mil CO2 from this last reaction. Those are our actual yields. So I said that I would run through finding your percent yield. So go ahead and record your actual yield into the actual yield column from the experiment. Next, we'll look at percent yield for reaction A. So we'll start with the formula, which is if we have a percent yield, we look at our theoretical yield. Um, that's going to be in the denominator. We get that from stoichiometry and we need our actual yield from the experiment. So in order to solve for this, let's take our actual yield from above, which is 24.0 milliliters. And now we'll go back into our table and look at the theoretical yield for reaction A, which was 22 milliliters. which is using stoichiometry, we determine this is how much of the CO2 should be produced. So we'll take that value, 24 divided by 22 milliliters, and come up with a value. And when you get that value, round it to two sig figs, okay? Now I want to take a look at the rest of the chart. Um, you need to complete that on your own for reactions B and C. We have the actual values earlier in this video, and you need to come up with the percent yield calculations. Um, and then the post-lab questions. So one of the challenges that you have in this post-lab question is to think about why I subtracted out this five milliliters, think about what we put into the reaction system and um, the amount of acetic acid that we used. Also, we're talking about comparing our value that we use the value at STP 
to determine for stoichiometry to our real value here. And just a heads up, I would say in my kitchen where I'm doing this reaction um, that the, the temperature is pretty close to about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So you might look up what that is in Celsius, okay? And of course, this is being done in Laramie. Read the information that follows your data collection in the lab and complete all of the data collection. Don't forget, when you come up with these values, you need to round that to the correct number of sig figs, and that will be a percent value.